a lot of my couples have been asking the question, how can I talk to my teens about sex? So first, I just want to give you a reason for why it's important to teach kids about sex. If you think of a bicycle, the first time you've sent your kid out on a bicycle, you put the helmet on their head. You didn't put a helmet on their head because you thought you, because you were a proponent of them crashing. Uh, we don't want our kids to crash. We want them to ride their bike safely and do well. And so that's why you use a helmet. The same is true for sex. You don't educate kids because you're saying necessarily that you condone them having sex at that time. But if you don't educate your teens and teach them to advocate for themselves, then they could crash. <laughs> they could make decisions that are dangerous. And so it is very important for you as a parent to really think about what kind of information your kids need, uh, your teens need, and teach them very specific tools for how to talk about sex when they are in relationships. Because um, even though I too have a daughter, she's 19 months, I don't ever want to think of her as a sexual person. I know that one day when she becomes a teenager, somebody might find her attractive and somebody else, she may find somebody else attractive. So educate your kids, that's the biggest point. But here's something you can do to learn how. A good thing to start talking to your teens about is boundaries. I think of boundaries as fences or squares. So if you think of a fence, a good fence is there to protect you. And a big way to learn where your boundary is is to first start asking yourself what you're comfortable with. And you as a parent could be asking your teens, where do you think you're at when it comes to different things sexually? Are you interested in sex? Do you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Have you guys tried anything? That's just step one. Exploring things, getting them to talk and feel comfortable, letting them know that you are absolutely okay talking to them about it, even though it's weird, because it's always weird. <laughs> that's normal. It's normal to feel weird. Um, so that's step one. It's just making the conversation open. But then step two is encouraging them to explore where their boundaries are. For example, Maybe your, your teen is in a relationship and she or he is ready to like hold hands and kiss, but they're not really ready to go further than that. So that's a boundary. And what they need to do is be able to say to their partner, I love it when we kiss and I love it when we hold hands, but I really only want it to stay there. Is that okay? That's asking, that's making a request or a boundary of that partner. And if they have a partner who says yes, then that's a good thing. Um, if their partner wants to do other things, that's fine too, but if once a boundary is set, the biggest thing is that you have to follow that boundary. And if you're with a good partner, they are willing to follow that boundary. And that goes for boys or girls or anyone else for that matter, because I know that people exist along a wide spectrum. So first is teaching your teens, the second thing is teaching your teens to really identify where their boundaries are and then teaching them how to talk to other kids about them so that they feel comfortable and confident asking for what they need. But then another big piece is also then teaching them how to be a good partner. So there are, if you've ever heard of coercion or pressure, basically what coercion and pressure is, is when somebody sets a boundary, here's my fence, and instead of really deeply respecting it, they essentially are like pushing at it. That's what the visual would look like. So if you thought of a neighbor who came up to your fence and like pushed at that boundary, you wouldn't like that neighbor. <laughs> you would maybe call the police actually. So how could a person be coercing uh, either your teen or how could your teen be coercive? So for example, if somebody has said, hey, I'm only okay with kissing and holding hands right now, if they're constantly saying things like, why don't you want to do any more than holding hands? Or what's wrong with you? Every other girl wants to do this. That's a coercion. That's a pressure. If you're deeply respecting a boundary, your job is to find out what it is and then stay there. Find ways to have as fun as you can, as much fun as you can, and really respect that boundary. That doesn't mean you can't ask. So like, say you're the person who wants to do something else. Um, say you have the teen who wants to do something else. They can say, I'd love it if one day we could make love, which I know is hard to think about your teens having sex, but there could be that happening. So they're allowed to ask, one day it would be nice if we could do this, but they still, if they're going to be a good partner, need to be able to say, but I'm totally respectful of where you're at and I don't ever want you to do something that you're not wanting to do for you too. And that's the key. 
So it's not about just being able to advocate for yourself and communicate for your needs, but it's also being able to deeply respect and value somebody else's boundaries. And regardless of whether your teen is a boy or a girl, they both need to understand how to be respectful of those boundaries. And this is just one helpful tip for how you can talk to your teens and help them to advocate more for themselves sexually.